Greetings. In the name of Dambella and Lisa, all that is good and great, all that is blessed and beautiful, all that is creative and conscious, and all that is positive and possible. May the warm sun rays greet you each and every morning, and may your day always be full of joy. Hotel, I am a disorder by Bancoli, your host to Mind Vibes, Thoughts from a Curious Mind, a bi-monthly podcast series exploring and examining social phenomena then and now. Now, in this episode, I want to tackle a... Um, a topic that my queen and I always discuss, and I titled this Vampires, Unicorns, and Fairy Tales, The Schizophrenia of Caucasoid's Quest Over Immortality. But before we go there, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, share, leave a comment. Now again, Vampires, Unicorns, and fairy tales, the schizophrenia of Caucasus's quest over immortality. Quote unquote, millions long for immortality who don't know what to do with themselves on a rainy Sunday afternoon. Susan Ertz. Now, in my many conversations with my queen and dearly departed brother Dan Truma, I often wanted to examine the minds of Europeans and their need to create for themselves a sense of immortality. Even through the creatures, fairy tales, and other stories they create for themselves. Even in their theocracy, there's a hint of defying death, or at least trying to make death noble for a cause, as with a mythical being dying on a cross for the good of all mankind who ascended into this quote-unquote paradise. Yet, it is this collective imagination, although fertile to some extent, there are some confusing. It is though they have a collective bipolar consciousness that their creativity has to it dark overtones and undertones in some extent. Their fairy tales are full of creatures like witches, evil leprechauns, or bad wolves eating grandmother. And at the same time, they obsess in dealing with immortality through their creation of stories like Count Dracula, who lives in limbo between life and death, yet a creature that must kill in order to stay alive. Such characters like the Frankenstein's creature he brings back to life, or the werewolf who has the ability to change from man to wolf, thereby having a sense of immortality. Yet the one thing all of these beings have in common is that they all must kill in order to survive. This Eurocentric fascination with the whole idea of control over life itself is destructive. When we look at the various stories and other creative expressions, they all tend to lean towards the darker side. Now, to be fair, many other melanin cultures have stories that have a, a dark undertone to them such as the story of Sundiata out of Mali, or some of the Aesop fables, and to some extent those that come out of the African-American experience. However, many of these creative expressions usually will have some form of lessons to them as as an African-American storyteller, even with my original pieces such as Elike the Eloku Bird, or Basi Bogo, and Do I Know My Name? Yet these stories usually, like I said above, had meaning to them and are often told to impart knowledge to the young ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I suppose in some ways, the whole genre, starting with Mary Shelby's Frankenstein, has a lesson to it, or some form of morality. In the version of the many Frankenstein films that has been done, it is the version that Robin De Niro, who takes on the role of the creature, when he states to his creator, did you not think of the consequences of your actions? Right? And and you know, and, and in some extent, yeah, you know, you you know, you you create these particular beings. And you know, if if you are a human being and you you know you you create these creatures, you know, you, you don't stop to think, what are you doing to that creature that you created? You know, how how do you how do you control something that 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 is not un uncontrollable you know and and you know and, and in a sense that's the same way i've been looking at some of these things on on facebook i mean not facebook youtube you know where they, they, they have this this somehow um obsession with the ends of time you know the destruction of earth how the earth came to an end. Will will mankind survive? This this type of of, of um, um, mobility, you know, you know this morbid need to to try to to figure out how you can deal with an immortality state of existence. Still, in large, in my opinion, the creativity that comes from the Euro-American mindset, seems <clears throat> to venture into the dark ebb of their consciousness. Their need, it seems, is to have dom dominion over everything. In the TV series Star Trek Deep Space Nine, they create a race, a being called the Dominions, being whose sole purpose is to war, to dominate, and to control. Yet again, in the Star Trek series, they offer us the beings called the Borg, half human and half machine, with no concept of individuality, whose lifespan is infinite because they are a collective and who again wants to control or absorb others into their way of life. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? You know? And, and uh, that, that's what many of them do. You know, they, they created these these creatures, the boar, dominion, or or whatever, you know. Yet here again, they create creatures that are not totally human and who don't have emotions either way. Therefore, they have no remorse as to whom they hurt or destroy. Their goals are power and immortality. Now, I, 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 I will tell you, I, I find this interesting. Because in some ways, I believe it's an expression of their cro magnet days where there was a need to show brute force to demonstrate their ability to dominate, to take control of their situation, to be a conquering people they eventually became, to conquer life itself, even if it's through their creative expression. Particularly within the patriarchal system, does this become does this become more apparent? A sense of entitlement, the need to become gods themselves. Yet unlike their god, perhaps the creation of an Olympian being is necessary in order to attempt control itself. They are infinite, totally powerful. They cannot come back from the dead like the mythical Jesus or walk on the water defying gravity, but through their stories, albeit dark ones, they can have immortality. However, it now seems that they are making their fantasies come to life with the creation of AI, other robotic systems, and genetic manipulation to make their stories a reality. But here again, as the Frankenstein creature did, do not think 
of the consequences of your creation. You know, again, this, this, you know, even in, in some of their, you know, their, their, um, their quoting on monster movies, you know, they want to, they want to, you know, they're scientists, and, and, and we got to deal with this type of thing, right? So they need only they, they be testing things on, on, on cells and manipulating human cells and doing genome mapping and all that stuff in order to create a human being or a being that is immortal and invincible. For Euro Americans, these may seem a solution to a non existent problem, except in their own minds. But it is one that will have repercussion on all humankind and Earth itself. And the old saying goes be careful of what you wish for, you just might get it. But it may not be what you want, because in all their stories, the life of immortality is one that is miserable, one that is agony and a longing for complete death itself. You know, Dracula, you know, he lives between death and life, but he's miserable because the only way that he can survive is through the death of others. And so he has this, this pain, this agony, you know, the werewolf, you know, is this is agony. Because, you know, every, every full moon or whatever, he got to transform into this, this, this you know, carnivorous beast. You know? This, this in-betwixt time, you know? And it is in that in-betwixt that, that lies this, this, this world or this, this state of being that is agonizing, right? But yet, here at the same time, you know, even in their sci-fi movies, like I said before, you know, the, the death of the world or the destruction of humankind or, you know, the attack of the whatever. It is this, this somehow or another, this morbid obsession with death, but then how do you control death itself? How do you deal with controlling time itself? You know, a lot of the um, stories that came out of uh, the series, uh, TV series, The Twilight Zone, and um, the other series, um, um, Outer Limits, you know, it's this, 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 that, that idea of how do we control time itself? How do we control life itself? How do we control death itself? And it seems this kind of fascination with Eurocentric mindset that, you know, gears toward that. But again, creating AI and these robotics, eh, one should be very careful because a society that deals with this kind of thinking will never be a society that can form a consensus of utopia. It will not be a society that will be able to uh, uh, deal with other cultures and other beings and other thoughts because you're constantly thinking of you and how you can control others and how you can control you know, time or energy itself. Right? And if we continue to go down that road, we may find we are not the ones in control, but the very things that we create will be controlling us. And that will not be beneficial to any form of utopian society. And this is a decent little bio being called the same. May we all strive to bend the arc of justice towards humanity and believe that peace and love can be achieved. Well, that's the peak.